Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and media functionality in C++ is basically non-existent. The standard libraries don't have things like uh, windowing libraries, or graphics drawing, 2D, or vector, or 3D, or anything of that stuff. You need to go to a third party to get that stuff. And if you are looking to do media applications in C++, one of the best options out there is Cinder. So that's what we're going to look at today. Is Cinder, this is a toolkit. It is free, open source, under the BSD license for creating visual, audio, so on and so forth. Pretty much everything you can think of. If it's multimedia related, Cinder provides an interface for it. And this one is, again, free, open source, available, works on Mac OS and on Visual Studio. Now, one of the things you're going to notice in the documentation is there's some of it out of date. This just says it requires Visual Studio 2015. That is a lie. It also doesn't mention anything about working on on Android, which also seems to now be a lie. So in terms of what Cinder can do, well, it's more a matter of what it can't do. So Cinder is cross-platform, officially supports Mac, Windows, Linux, iOS, and Windows UWP. There is Android build stuff out there right now. Uh, it is under BSD Clause 2 license. And in terms of what it provides, well, you can break that down into five separate areas. First one is you got the platform core. This is the uh, things like uh, handling touch on uh, touch-oriented applications. So, so if you're on like uh, a tablet Windows PC or a mobile phone or whatever, uh, abstracting away the file system below, and even things like handling screensavers, internet handling, and so on. So all of the stuff that you need to do, uh, you know, networking, file loading, and that kind of stuff in a cross-platform way, uh, Cinder provides that. And again, that's nice. This kind of stuff, the standard libraries for C++ are pretty sparse. There's not media stuff like there is in the world of Java or C Sharp. So Cinder provides all of that core functionality. And then on top of that, we also have 3D graphics stuff. Uh, there's OpenGL behind the scenes. Uh, it's got stuff like textures, uh, FBOs, GLSL, the shader programming, VBOs, lights, materials, display lists, um, GUI parameters, core classes, OpenGL core. Then we get into the mathematics stuff. It provides a number of math-based classes that you would require. We have 2D graphic support, uh, including SVG, PDF, and so on, font handling, uh, HDRI imaging, uh, image loading, uh, and then finally we get into the media stuff where we're even getting in stuff like OpenCV, which is computer vision. Uh, we got audio um, input and output, so if you need to record audio or play it back. Uh, video support, if you need to capture from a video capture device. Basically, if you need to do anything multimedia related in C++, Cinder is kind of a catch-all for doing that kind of stuff. As I mentioned earlier on, it is open source, available up on GitHub. This will be in the linked article down below if you want to go ahead and check it out. The last official release was uh, 2020, but it's very much under active development. As you can see here, they are, so 26 days ago was the most recent update to this particular branch. Oh, sorry, 19 days ago. So this is a project that has been around for a very, very long time. Let's see what they've got in terms of official releases. We are seeing, going back to uh, 2010. <laughs> so in 2010, they released version 0.8.0. They did not increase their version numbers very often. So if you were looking for multimedia uh, stuff, you're trying to create a level editor, a tool, uh, maybe even a game engine. A lot of this probably isn't real-time specifically supported, but there is a lot of functionality in here. In fact, let's show you one of the examples in action. Then I'm going to show you how to go about and actually work with Cinder. So this is a cloth simulation application. This is built on top of their OpenGL stuff, and it's handling... Class simulation, pretty straightforward. So you get an idea, this is an extreme edge case of what Cinder is all about. But when we go ahead and look at the examples, you're gonna find Cinder does a little bit of everything. So if you were looking for a media application, Cinder is probably where you're at. So let's go ahead and look at how to grab it. First things first, go to the GitHub webpage, go to the code and clone and grab the, uh, the link. And then we're just gonna go ahead and open up, actually I'll do a developer command prompt. Like so, let me zoom that in so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so we go into the temp folder, of course. Uh, Cinder. All right, so what we're going to do is now do a git clone and then bring that repository down. Now, one of those things about git is it's kind of universally slow. I'm on uh, gigabit internet and I download at three mibs per second. So I'm going to just go ahead and pause while git does its thing. All right, so there we come to the end. You're gonna notice this is a 400 megabyte uh, repository, so 415 megabytes. So it's going to take a little bit of time if you got a slower connection. And then we're 
All right, now that you've got the uh, source code cloned, it's pretty simple from this point on. Uh, here we are in our directory. We're just gonna go ahead, do an explorer current directory and open that file up. So we're gonna go into the cinder directory right here. And what we've got, uh, really all you need to do is go into your projects folder right here and pick your platform of choice. Now you're gonna notice we've got uh, Xcode, CMake, and Android options out there. Visual Studio 2015 for the old school WinRT, but you're gonna probably, if you're on Windows like myself, want to use Visual Studio 2019 and just open up the solution file. Now what we're gonna to need to do is go ahead and build this thing. We're gonna to have to build it for the matching platform that we're gonna use in our examples. Uh, not too difficult. All you basically do is come in here and select the right version. So I'm gonna do a full debug version and X64. Once we are good to go, just do uh, Control Shift B. I already built it, so you're not seeing much happening here. If you want to jump in, you can see the code is it's pretty straightforward. It, it's clean enough C++ code. You can see all of the various different dependencies it works on are in here as well. So once you've got that built, this is going to generate a lib file. So we're going to go ahead, take a look at it right here. So here we are back at the root of the Cinder project. That process, this compilation process builds this file right here, lib. MSW for Microsoft Windows, obviously if you're on a different platform or build chain, you're gonna have a different answer. MSW, X64, debug, V4, V42, and that could change depending on your compiler as well. And then finally, cinder.lib. You're gonna notice cinder.lib is gigantic too, 162 megabytes in size. All right, so now if you wanna go ahead and check out the samples, let's go back to cinder itself. And you're gonna notice we have a samples directory. And this will give you an idea of the samples we are dealing with here. So you've got all kinds of stuff. You got uh, font handling, geometry management, image file loading, uh, dealing with high DPI displays, iOS dealing with native controls. We've got multi-touch handling, uh, quick time handling, uh, Veroni text box usage, and then we've come down here into Audi, uh, Audi uh, audio. You got a number of things here for um, handling uh, audio, buffered playback, voice recording, and so on. OpenGL is where you'll find the 3D stuff. We got a number of examples in here, including the cloth simulation, which we're going to show you how to build in just a second. Uh, then we've got SVG or scalable vector graphics, a number of examples in there. And timeline, uh, we got a number of different examples here as well. So palette browser, tweening, and so on. So there is a ton of media functionality in this guy. And that is, again, very, very handy because the world of C++ just doesn't have this out of the box. So if you want to go ahead and build a sample, just go on in here, go to, say, the sample you want to open up, pick your platform of choice, in my case, Visual Studio 2019, and open up the solution file. And uh, there's not really a ton involved here either, but you just wanna make sure of a couple of things. Some of the old examples uh, are problematic, and I'm gonna show you what you need to do to fix them. The first thing you wanna do, come up here and make sure that you're matching uh, debug and X64, like we did over here, debug and X64. So make sure you're building with the same version you built uh, in, in the other one. So if you do release, make sure it's released over here. And then once you've done that, go to your project file and go to properties. And there's a couple of key things you're gonna to wanna to do here. First, go to the C++ category and go to all options and make sure C++ language standard is set to C++ 17. Some of the old examples were actually set to C++ 13 in the Visual Studio project files, and you're gonna get an error, standard underscore underscore file system not found. It's because they're using some C++ 17 extensions, uh, but they didn't update all of their projects. Just one of those things to be aware of. Another thing that I found, and I haven't really dug into why, instead I just did a brute force fix, um, the uh, pathing for the library. So it's looking for cinder.lib, which just got built. And it's doing so using uh, the, the path here. And now I've actually hard set it already here. But you're gonna find, it's trying to find it via dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, and so on. So it's trying to find it here. And it should find it, for some reason it doesn't. So what I just do is I add a new entry like so, click right here, and then I basically just uh, give it the path to, so cinder, lib, platform, build, build type, version, and then right there. So I've already done that, it's in there right now. So I'll just go ahead and get rid of that new entry. So I'm brute forcing it the location of that lib file. But if you get any can't find cinder.lib errors, just add that additional path there. The, the default, the dot, 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 slash pathing should work. I just haven't gone through the logic of why it isn't currently working. And then finally, we'll just go ahead and build our example. We can run it in action. Obviously my build was instant because I, I was showcasing you get this guy earlier on. There you can see, again, uh, cloth physics simulation using OpenGL. In terms of what code looks like for Cinder, uh, it's pretty straightforward to be honest. Here, here we go, we're in a Cinder-based, go away window, a Cinder-based application, they're derived from app, 
Uh, so you you handle things basically using a number of system callbacks. For example, mouse handling, drag, drop, up. Uh, you can cast ray positions. Uh, it's it's straightforward and clean code. Another thing you're going to like like about this is everything is pretty well documented. Uh, another thing you're going to notice here is I am GUI is fully integrated. So if you need to do UI work, uh, it's all in there out of the box for you. So that's a quick look at Cinder. The documentation is going to tell you that you need to use Visual Studio 2015. That is a lie, as you saw today. But do be aware, once again, some of the examples you're going to open up, especially in uh, this folder right here, the key examples. Uh, for example, I think it was Earthquake. Yeah, so I'm going to grab Earthquake. I'm going to show you what I was talking about. Visual Studio 2019. Let's open up this one. Uh, this is, I think, one of the ones where I ran into a problem. When you go ahead and build this, it's going to tell you a couple problems. First, it's going to tell you that it can't find cinder.lib. So you need to go ahead and change that once again. So properties here, uh, linker, input. So it's looking for cinder.lib. That's under general right here. So again, that pathing, oops. Ah, let's undo that. I clicked the wrong thing. All right, let's, let's try that again where I clicked the right thing this time. So come in here. We're going to manually add it like so. This part shouldn't be required, uh, but for some reason on my system it is. All right, there we go. So we select our path, go ahead, and now I'm gonna try and build it and see if I get the problem I was talking about earlier on. So we'll build our code. Oh, shit, shoot. Uh, you're gonna get a ton of errors here for a couple of reasons. First off, there is the error you're going to get. So if you run into this problem, uh, this is straight out because of C++. So this is one of those things to notice. File system is not a member of STD. So you're gonna run into that and that is the Visual Studio, um, the uh, C++ 17 standard issue. The other thing is I screwed up. We gotta set that to 64. So you definitely wanna make sure that or it's going to have trouble finding Cinder. I don't know if we're actually gonna get that error in this case because of all the C++ 17 errors. So if you go to build some of the examples and you run into problems, uh, what you need to do, once again, is come in here, properties, uh, and then it's under C++, actually I think it's even, if you come up here, so it's straight out to general. So there's two ways to get to it. But C++, advanced, uh, and then, sorry, all options. Hmm. All right, make sure that's set. Uh, make sure you're building for x64. And now this example should work a heck of a lot better. I think I, I think I may have unfortunately already edited that one as well. So just to be aware, if you run into that standard file system error, it's a C++ 17 missing thing. Uh, just set that over. And the other error is going to be because it can't find lib or you didn't match the version exactly. So if you want to build for release, you're going to have to go over here. Oh actually here and build this for release as well. And now that we built the earthquake example, we might as well go ahead and run it, showcase you another one of the examples that's built in here. I forget what this actual demo does. Oh, I think it's pointing out earthquake locations. So yeah, anyways, that's another one of the capabilities you see here. Obviously you've got 3D rendering, uh, orbital, mouse handling, and so on. So that is another Cinder example. So if you're interested in checking out Cinder, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, open source available up on GitHub, interesting project. It provides, again, a lot of the stuff that you would think would come with a, a um, tool chain out of the box, media handling, uh, mathematics, 3D graphics, 2D graphics, uh, and things like um, file, IO, networking, and so on, but they don't. Uh, so if you're looking for all of that stuff in just one package, you can find it in Cinder. You're also going to find uh, gallery-wise, there's a ton of examples out there of what people have used Cinder for. There's a handful of games out here, but a lot of this is uh, media presentation. So here you can see an iOS app that was made using Cinder. So you can definitely make games using Cinder, but a lot of this is for like museum exhibits and examples and, and those kind of projects. But this this projects thing just kind of keeps going and going. I never actually found the end of it, by the way. But if you're interested in, oh, okay, never mind. The end isn't that far. Um, if you're interested in, uh, again, multimedia capabilities on top of C++, Cinder could be a good thing to check out. Now, it may not be, for like for the most intensive games out there, probably not gonna be the tool you want, but for quick and dirty tools, for sure, if C++ is what you wanna work with, uh, for applications with a media bent, or basically, like if you were making something like Myth, 
you're not going to have the huge requirements, so definitely you could use something like this for that. Uh, there are materials out there, and then there's also a pair of applications to help you out. Tinderbox um, is included with Cinder, it makes it easier to create new projects, and Cinderblock uh, packages a number of the code pieces together. I believe is that how that works. Then again, we come in here, we have the documentation as well. It is nicely well documented. Uh, there are a number of samples as we saw in action, but if you want to come in here, learn about the math libraries, they are all documented. Everything is here. So if you're interested in checking out Cinder, uh, everything is very much well documented. The only problem is your setup here for Windows, this is outdated and wrong. So it's basically saying Cinder supports Visual Studio, like, and then we're talking four years out of date. This, ignore. As you saw in this video, works perfectly well in 2019. In fact, 2019 is probably the easiest way to go with Cinder right now. So let me know what you think of Cinder as a library. It is available at libcinder.org. And of course, I will uh, put the GitHub repository up there as well, but it's available at github slash Cinder. It's pretty straightforward on the whole. Uh, so that is uh, Cinder. Let me know what you think about that. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.